Hey again, YouTube. We're doing some prep work here, getting ready to do some more clock things with the quarry and whatever. So I thought I'd record this in case it winds up being useful or something. But this is uh, just a, a 466 board, a 60 clone. Um, it's got some mods and stuff done to it, but by and large, I mean, nothing's out of the ordinary. And we're going to focus on the quarry here. So um, Mr. Rossi made a special firmware for it that we are going to load onto it that allows us to repurpose one of the pins on this logic gate over here as a dot clock output and that'll be important later for now let's just worry about getting the software on it so here we'll kick it over there we're going to be using our ultimate two for drive emulation here and here we have the, the dot clock hack and if uh yeah if you got to do this on d64s it'll be a pain in the butt because there's five discs worth of stuff you know the the fuse files that got to get flashed into the fpga so luckily we can emulate a d81 and you know there's everything you need so yeah there's i don't know 200 and some odd files i think We'll let it go. Oh, there we go. 160. So here we'll just load the first one. And it will show you your current firmware version and all that other good stuff. This utility will flash an update to your Vic2 Kawari. Do not turn off the machine. I am plugged into a UPS right now, just in case. Um, the garbage at the top of the screen will be normal. Uh, when using a fast loader, if you have your own fast loader cartridge, select no when prompted. If you're using a Pi 1541, remember to add all the discs to your queue. Um, we're using a single D81 image, so that piece doesn't matter. So uh, we're going to tell it no um, because we have our own fast loader. We have Jiffy DOS installed. So, all right, flash lock bit enabled. Oh, that's right. I got to move a jumper. All right. Let's figure out what jumper we got to move. Okay, pausing for a moment to read the manual here. Function lock jumpers. Uh, by default, flash operations are disabled. Uh, this is for safety in case somebody writes malware for your Commodore that will destroy your board. We don't want that. So this means you must physically remove the jumper on pin one to allow the flash utility to work. So I recommend to put it back after you flash the device. So uh, I am going to go out on a limb and say, here, let's flip this over that way, that jumper one is going to be the one closest to the top of the board. You know, call me crazy, but if I were designing a board, I would make that jumper one, two, and three because the notch is pin one. Like, Seems like common sense there. So let's remove him. I vaguely remember doing this when I flashed the other board, but that was a while ago. I don't recall. So let's see if that did anything good for our lives. That's better. Identifying flash. Insert disk one. We only have one disk because we're using the D81. Use fast loader. No, we have our own. And we're going to perform flash. All right, we will let this thing cook for a little while. I'll come back when it's done. All right, and we are done. Press any key. I guess we could do a verify, but I'm gonna live dangerously. Yeah, there we go. He booted right up, no problem. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's all it takes to flash these things. 
So uh, yeah, next is is doing some hardware stuff. So we'll uh, we'll stop here. I'll get set up to do some hardware things, and we'll record some of that too. All right, now that we've got software on the Kawari that will be able to generate a dot clock, let's talk a little bit about where the dot clock hooks up and and why it is we're actually doing what we're doing. So here's a schematic of the uh, the side of the board that matters to us. This is the schematic will apply to the the 425, the 25425, and the 25466 board. These are the boards that have the single 8701. Uh, or 7701 clock generator chip, uh, the, the simplified VIC section, right? So digging into here a little bit, th this chip up here is our VIC, right? So we don't really need to talk about him so much except that he is a consumer of the dot clock in a standard system, meaning that the, the dot clock is generated by the 8701, by the clock generation portion of the board, and the VIC uses that clock to do things. Now, coming here, uh, where is he? Here's our dot clock. He comes out of pin six, right? So he's gonna come out and go to the VIC. The VIC is a consumer of this generated clock, but he's also going to the, the cartridge slot. And there's a number of cartridges that will use the, the dot clock. Not, not a lot of them, you know, games and typical ROMs and stuff like that won't but your memory expansions, the Geo RAM and the, uh, you know, the Commodore RU, your uh, ultimate cartridge that has RAM expansion capabilities, uh, modems. Uh, the modem is more important to me than anything, but I like some RAM too. But at any rate, the, the dot clock is important if you're gonna be running any more of these, uh, we'll call them advanced cartridges or cartridges that have more tricks up their sleeves. And uh, not just cartridges, but other stuff internal to the machine as well. If you're going to hook it to the dot clock line, like uh, the Bones internal modem, uh, I love that friggin' modem, uh, any of the SwiftLink cartridge based modems, uh, they will, uh, or, or the, uh, what was the other one, the uh, 232, whatever it is, it's basically a SwiftLink, right? It works the same way in, in that. It uses the cartridge slot to interface a modem, has a UART, and the UART needs to time off something, it uses the dot clock. Um, so all that to say, it's it's a very simple circuit, right? On, on this board especially, where it comes out of the clock generator, goes to the VIC, goes to the cartridge slot, and really doesn't go anywhere else. Nothing else uses it. So what does this look like in a machine? Let's take a look. Okay, so inside our 60 clone, we do have, uh, where's a pointer? We do have an internal SwiftLink device. So one of these lines goes to the, the data bus that's gonna uh, handle the IO. In this case, it's D700. So we have this cutesy little board. That's a story for another day. But uh, the line we care about today is the other one. This is the one that would go to your dot clock, and you would typically hook that up to pin six on your cartridge slot. Um, and you can, and it works well, all until you start playing with the dot clock. Um, so here, let's zoom in on the side of the board that really matters here. And coming out here, we'll, we'll start with the Kawari. Coming out of the Kawari, you have uh, this LSO5 logic gate there that our good friend and creator of this board, uh, Randy Rossi, has done that custom firmware for us that allows us to grab his dot clock that's being generated on the quarry from, from that pin, pin number three. You know, it's the third one over from the center on the edge of the board there. So I had to tack a little wire on there and we, uh, we now have a dot clock being generated on, on the quarry. Um, the dot clock still exists on, on uh, the cartridge slot now, on you know coming out of the 8701, right? And the 8701 is underneath him here. We'll, uh, and that dip switch is just to go back and forth between PAL and NTSC. But here, let's get the quarry out for a second. So there, there's our 8701 clock generator, right? So pin six on here, you could just lift out of the socket and that would stop our, our clock from making it there and then you can just bodge this in. Um, so that's that's one thing we can do. The other thing you can do is just completely remove that chip and only run the onboard oscillator. 
Um, I don't know that there's a real argument to be made for retaining the 8701 at all, uh, but it is definitely a possibility. And the the only place it goes out of that socket is to pin six on there. So let's uh, let's fire this back up and take a look at the clocks. So I do believe if I go back over here and bring up that little guy, turn on our scope. All right, let me get the scope set up. We'll be right back. All right, I've got our scope set up, and here's how we are. Um, we have one probe on the newly generated dot clock coming out of the quarry module, and our other probe, uh, just for ease of clipping on there, is right on pin 6 of the cartridge slot, and th that's basically just hardwired to the output of the 8701 it doesn't do anything special it's just a trace going over there uh, so let's see where's our as you can see we're booted up into NTSC mode I have the scope set on single shot right now and so here here's our clocks and and herein lies the problem here I'll blow this up a little bit is that our clocks are at a phase so uh, which ones which let me let me look here so the purple trace is going to be the native dot clock on the machine and the yellow trace is the one that's coming from the quarry module and right here at this shot they're they're not in phase with each other um the the phase locked piece of this is going to be less important for a modem you might drop a character or two here and there, but it, it, it probably won't be the end of the world. But for a RAM expansion, you're going to have all kinds of data corruption happening if you're running your, your cart slot on an out of phase dot clock. And what's worse is if uh, here we're going to shut off the machine, we're going to flip over to PAL mode and boot back up. All right, now we're booted up in PAL. Let's take another single shot. And you're you're at a phase, and then you're going to drift, right? If if you look here, I mean, we're we're almost in phase a little bit, you know. I mean, we're we're kind of in the ballpark. But as time goes on and on and on, you're going to be drifting back because the this is running at 7.88 meg instead of 8.18 meg. You know, the the purple trace is at 8.18 still. The NTSC dot clock, where your your dot clock that you really need to run the machine properly in PAL mode is is you know, going to be out of phase and off kilter and all kinds of stuff because they're not even running at the same frequency. So that's what we need to solve here is if, if you want to have a working dot clock as stable as possible to support all the cartridges and NTSC PAL switching, those are the two use cases here, you really just need to abandon the onboard dot clock completely uh, and badden the onboard clocks completely. There's really no need for them anymore. There's no need for an 8701. There's no need for for you know any any of that uh, crystal or uh, adjustment cap or any of that junk anymore. Um, I guess if you really wanted to keep your onboard oscillator and use the dot clock from the Kawari, you'd still be out of phase. You don't want to do that either. No, this is bad. You just need to abandon all the onboard clocks if A, you want to do NTSC PAL switching, and B, you want your cartridge slot to work properly. So let's, uh, let's shut her down. Let's go back over to the board view. All right, so... On this board, it's going to be painstakingly simple to do this, right? So let me get the scope probes out of the way here. And we got to get the quarry out. So carefully, I don't want to break you, little buddy. I should probably use a chip lifter. Yeah, let me get a tool. If I broke this, I'd be really sad. We'll get him out of the way. We're
we're just going to pull the 8701 out. Hopefully it is socketed for you as well. Come on. There he is. So much easier when you can see what you're doing. And at this point, this crystal is going to be abandoned. You know, he won't go anywhere anymore because he's wired directly into the 8701. But in my case, it's in some sockets anyway, so I might as well just pull it out of there. There's no need to have that anymore. It would just be in the way. So we will reinstall our Kawari now. And if you look here, these jumpers says MB OSC. So uh, motherboard oscillator, or, or you know, motherboard or onboard oscillator is what that means. So as as Randy ships these by default, these two jumpers are in the the you know onboard oscillator position. So now we have our newly made dot clock. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's kick back over to our S video. Yep, we're up and running in PAL mode. So now if we look at our clock, let's do that. Another clock. channel 2 anymore here let's do that that yeah there we go 7.8788 frequent yeah there it is 7.882 all right if we Power cycle the machine back in NTSC mode. We have our 8.1818 clock. So now we have proper dot clock coming out of this thing. Now, if if we were to just ram that clip on there earlier with the the original motherboard oscillator clock there running as well, that probably wouldn't be a good thing. <laughs> you know, out of phase clocks colliding with each other, there'd be all kinds of badness happening on that circuit and I'm afraid you know at best nothing would work at worst I'm afraid it would actually damage the Kawari board um, so now that we know this works um, I don't know how I feel about having the these big honking clips hanging out all over the system also I think I'd like to put a resistor on it uh, 30 ohms, something something small, just something to have uh, a little bit of current limiting in there is what Randy recommended and I wholeheartedly agree with. So let me go find a resistor and let's make this wire a little more permanent. All right, I dug up a little resistor, 38 ohms. This is orange, white, black, gold. And I think what we're going to do is just come right off of pin number six on, on the cartridge slot and put it on our wire and a little bit of heat shrink tube to keep it safe. So we're going to trim this guy down very short like, you know what, I might even unplug power from this thing. Look at me being all safe. But uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to trim this real short like, so we just have the tiniest little nub coming off of there. And a little bit of solder out here. And we'll probably burn ourselves doing this, but hey, whatever. We're going to put a little bit. Are we on? Yeah, we're going to put a little bit of solder on the end of there. We're going to go to the six pin over on the top row. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to put a little bit of solder there. More than a little bit. Make our lives easier. Make that good and gooey. And we'll put our 
resistor. Let's see if I can do this so you guys can see. Resistor is just going to go right on top of that leg there. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll take our little wire and we're just going to go right up on that resistor with them. That looks like a good enough way to run them. Again, we're going to trim this real short, like we have a little more on the side to work with, but we don't need much. And then we'll find ourselves some heat shrinky shrinky. I believe this should be a good size. Yep, absolutely. We'll go on our wire, pull it way far away so we don't melt it prematurely. Nobody likes premature meltage. And we'll cut our wire about that long. Strip some insulation off. Tin. A little tin on this side. And we ought to be able to put these little boogers together. Look at that. Probably could just leave it like that, but I have a lot of stuff happening on this cartridge port. So. Let's put that all the way up there. And I will shrink that down here momentarily with a little bit of heat. All right, we'll do one final check here just as a sanity test, right? So we, we are booted up, uh, we are our heat shrunk, we're safe. This is our little clip lead going off to our uh, modem. Um, but uh, let's see here. So in NTSC, we should have our 818 clock, and we do. And then on pin 39, we should have our 102 clock at 1.022. Let's uh, we'll look at him a little better, do we? Go like that. Bring him down a little. There we go. There's our happy little clock. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess we uh, want to get real creative. We could look at the, uh, the video signals, too. We can, we can look at those over here, right? but hang on this should be our, our 3.58 yep and it is and here's our color our 15 kilohertz color for NTSC now the the frequency display on the scope isn't exactly great now maybe it'll maybe we can dial it in a little better Eh, it still kind of bounces around, but we can tell it's close enough. It's at least in the standard we're looking for, right? So here we'll uh, we'll shut it off. We'll flip it over to PAL mode, and here we should have our seven eight eight clock. Yep, seven eight eight two zero one. Blah blah blah. And let's. And it looks almost like a clock there, and then. 
going back to our CPU, we should have our 985. And we do. And what's our video stuff look like? 4.44. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be in PAL, to be honest with you. The sockets playing up again. Yeah, I got a bad pin in that socket, but uh, all right. Four point or or three point five seven, blah blah blah, and sixteen point nine forty six. 20 point something yeah i don't even know what it's supposed to be in pal but obviously it's working because i'm getting output so yeah our, our clocks are our clocks are healthy we're safe over here this isn't going to short out or anything we're soldered on real good um i would encourage some kind of strain relief over here let's uh let's kick back over to the bigger mode so right where we're we're coming off that logic chip, you know, it's it's not like there's a terrible amount of strain on it, but what I will probably do is blob it with hot glue. Um, once I'm sure this chip is staying in here and I like it, it's all well and good, I'll probably blob some hot glue on there. I think it just helps with strain relief enough, but it's still easy enough to get rid of if for whatever reason you need to get it off and do something in there, so. Anyway, I think that's it. I'll uh, I'll edit this stuff together. I'll probably write up a, a little cheat sheet narrative on on how to do this, you know, real quick and dirty like. But this will be the companion video if you want to dig in a little deeper. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Have fun. All right, if you're still watching, this is going to be a little extra credit segment. I figure if we did all this work, we should make sure it actually works, right? So we have our T-Bone modem, which requires a working dot clock, as well as a GeoRAM cartridge, which requires a working dot clock. So let's give both of those guys a workout, shall we? Um, we're going to need keyboard, some disk access. We'll fire this bad boy up. And we will go into strike term because it is capable of using both of those at pretty much the same time. Yes, our memory is connected. It's not just REU, it's any memory. It will ask you that question if you have it configured. And if you see free bytes down the bottom there. We certainly have more memory than the Commodore should. You know, over a mega RAM there. So we go into our buffer, it shows up that the device is detected and all that other good stuff. So here we can load some stuff into it from disk. You know, just to give it a little bit of a workout. Oh, I guess we're gonna load that one twice. Eh, we'll see what happens. So now it's just loading off the SD card into memory. You could put stuff here if you were going to upload it or something like that. Typically, this is like a download buffer kind of thing or text buffer or whatever. But uh, we'll uh, we'll just put some junk on there just to just to make sure it reads and writes and all that other good stuff. And this should be interesting. What happens when you write the same file twice to it? already exist. All right, good enough. So here we can go into terminal mode, we can open a buffer as well. And let's dial something. I got a BBS on speed dial.
All right, not bad. We are on. We don't have any, you know, corrupted characters or any of that other stuff. So we will close the capture file, we'll log off, go back to our buffer, look at the directory of it, and there's our test file. So how do you write to disk? Save to disk. E. File exist. I've used that file name once or twice, so let's replace. There we go. And if we uh, this buffer directory want disk directory, if we go all the way down to the bottom. We should see our freshly written test one two three. We sure do. So yeah, I'd say this thing is working. We have data in, data out, modems working. I think we're in good shape. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.